Thanks, officers. Sorry again. Yeah, now me and him, we gotta go take a shower. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Sorry about that. You guys have a good night. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're discussing 10 times Jeffrey Dahmer almost got caught. After that, he knew that he could manipulate. He knew that he could make a statement to somebody and get away with it. For this list, we're looking at the several instances when the Milwaukee cannibal's reign of terror could have been stopped. What do you think was the closest he came to getting caught? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Stopped by police in Ohio. In June 1978, Jeffrey Dahmer had just graduated high school. He'd also committed his first murder. Dahmer picked up hitchhiker Stephen Hicks and brought him back to his empty house to hang out and have, quote, a few beers. He brought the guy home. They had access to alcohol. Uh, they were drinking. They got a little intoxicated. But when the guy wanted to leave, Jeff did not want him to leave. He wanted him to stay because he was lonely and also he was intoxicated. When Hicks wanted to leave, Dahmer struck him in the head with a dumbbell before ultimately taking his life. After performing disturbing acts on the body, he put his remains in trash bags and intended to take them to the dump. But Ohio police pulled him over for drunk driving while he did so. An officer inquired about the trash bags in the back seat, and Dahmer used his parents' recent divorce as an excuse for driving late at night. My parents just got divorced and I, I can't really sleep, so I uh, just do yard work and I uh, was gonna drop him at the dump. He then drove back to scatter the remains behind his home. Dahmer knew what was at stake, and Dahmer was cool enough to say, no, just garbage on the way to dump the garbage. The officer believed him. Banned from bathhouses. While living with his grandmother in West Allis, Wisconsin, Jeffrey Dahmer frequented gay bathhouses and bars in the Milwaukee area. He stated that he had consensual sex in the bathhouses, but that he didn't like his partners moving or making demands. He was a very selfish lover. He, he wanted to be the giver. He did not want to be the receiver of homosexual sex. Around June 1986, Dahmer started slipping sedatives into his partner's drinks and performed non-consensual acts while the men were unconscious, a method he would use on future murder victims. When they fell unconscious, he would lie down next to them, listening to the sounds of their bodies, their heartbeats, their stomachs. One night, he overdrugged someone, and paramedics had to be called, and Dahmer was subsequently banned from the bathhouses. Don't think you can go to Empire or Roman bath. I told him about you. You're blacklisted. Police allegedly followed up on one bathhouse manager's claims that Dahmer had drugged multiple patrons, but didn't investigate beyond questioning him. They essentially just told the bathhouse operator to notify them if he returned and keep him off the property. The suitcase. The first victim Jeffrey Dahmer murdered in Milwaukee was Stephen Tuomi in November 1987, though claimed he had no memory of the murder. He brought the young man back to his room at the Ambassador Hotel for the night, but he woke up after a blackout to a deceased Tuomi. It was a surprise to him. So there wasn't an actual intent, it wasn't a fantasy, but what his deepest desire was still came out. He carried the body out of the hotel in a suitcase, and a cab driver helped him load the luggage. Because of the bad smell and the heaviness, the driver jokingly asked if there was a dead body in there. In fact, Dahmer said the cab driver even said, hey, you must have a dead body in here. The suitcase was so heavy. In his confession, he told investigators that he didn't respond. However, other sources claimed that he laughed and said, yeah, something like that. Either way, this is another example of Dahmer's ability to deflect and go undetected. It had been nine years since Stephen Hicks, and now Dahmer had killed again. This time, he would no longer resist his violent fantasies. Ronald Flowers reports Dahmer to the police. On April 23, 1988, Jeffrey Dahmer found a young man having car trouble and offered to help, taking a cab back to West Allis. Come on, let's grab a taxi before we get robbed. Ronald Flowers drank some of the coffee Dahmer laced with sleeping pills. Both of them reportedly heard his grandma call for him, but soon Flowers passed out. Put something in that, didn't you? What? Not wanting to risk getting caught, Dahmer allegedly left him at County General Hospital. After waking up the next day, Flowers reported to police that he had been drugged, assaulted, and robbed. And the next thing I remember was becoming extremely dizzy and my head starting to go down and that's it. 
when you say and that's it, do you mean you passed out? Yes. What's your next memory? Woke up in the County General Hospital in Milwaukee. Investigators questioned Dahmer at his grandma's, and he denied the accusations. By this time, Dahmer already had three arrests on his record, including disorderly conduct, indecent exposure, and lewd and lascivious behavior. However, police still believed him over Flowers. So let me get this straight. You're going to take the word of a white guy who's got a criminal record over the word of a black man who doesn't have a criminal record. That's what you're telling me. Right? Because I'm telling you that this man tried to kill me. And you're saying there's nothing you can do about that? Without any evidence, yes. That's what I'm saying. Arrest and search warrant. After Jeffrey Dahmer was captured in July 1991, he told investigators about multiple times over the years when he thought he'd been caught. Dahmer's seeming normality helped him hide his reign of terror. People like Dahmer can get away with this easier because law enforcement does not recognize him for what he is. Uh, they're looking for somebody who's dragging their knuckles on the pavement and baying at the moon with hair in their face. In September of 1988, he was arrested after drugging and photographing a minor, the older brother of his future victim, Connor Axent the Somphone. I saw this uh, Eurasian guy walking down the street in the afternoon. Asked him if he wanted to make some money, $50. He said yes. He said the police conducting a search at his apartment after his arrest had missed a human skull Dahmer kept in a drawer. This overlooked evidence could have prevented him from having the opportunity to kill Anthony Sears in March 1989. It also would have kept him in custody longer than the judge's sentence in May, which was five years probation with one year of work release while staying in the House of Correction. When we look at the Jeffrey Dahmer case, there are a number of failures by the system, whether it's probation and parole or whether it's law enforcement or whether it's the courts that failed to protect the victims. The box incident. Where is that box? What box? Don't play dumb. Jeffrey Dahmer admitted to keeping a mummified head of one of his victims, storing it in a wooden box in his bedroom closet at his grandma's house. At one time, his father Lionel tried to look inside. We got into uh, a bit of an argument because I wouldn't open it up. He. Uh, took the, the locked box down to the basement and was about to uh, smash it open. But I came back in the house, we reconciled. In later interviews, Dahmer also claimed to have brought the head to work and put it in his locker. Were you almost flaunting it? Yes, but that's how strong the compulsion was. That's how bizarre the, the desire was. I wanted to keep something of, of the person with me. His locker was searched at some point, and the skull was discovered, but since he'd already painted it, investigators believed it to be fake. Questioned about Dean Vaughn. No! No! In early May 1991, 28-year-old Dean Vaughn, a resident on the third floor of the Oxford Apartments, was found strangled to death. Police questioned other residents, including Jeffrey Dahmer. The Milwaukee Cold Case website states that two neighbors did see Vaughn with an unknown subject shortly before his death. Dahmer denied any involvement in the murder, though Vaughn did fit his victimology and MO. He was a young African-American male who was strangled. And what about Dean Vaughn? You was talking to him in the hallway, then I never saw him after that. He later told investigators that the officers asked to come inside his apartment, and he was nervous because he had a dead body in his bedroom. However, they ultimately didn't even go inside. As of 2022, Dean Vaughn's murder is still unsolved. Conorak sent the Somphone almost escaped. Perhaps the most widely known incident of Dahmer evading capture is the night of May 27, 1991, when Milwaukee police failed to save an escaped victim. Several young women saw an incoherent and dazed Conor Axent the Somphone stumbling near the Oxford Apartments and called the police. He was holding on to me with a really, really strong grip and he was trembling, he was shaking. 
So I just stay with him and I was like, I'm going to get you some help. Officers Joseph Gabrish and John Balserzak said that nothing seemed suspicious, and Dahmer assured them that this was his drunk boyfriend. Running Dahmer's name through the system would have shown that he was a registered sex offender on probation, previously convicted of enticing a minor for immoral purposes, Conorak's older brother. However, it was something that really shocked Jeff when he heard that. He just was, was floored by it. Uh, it's just amazing that they were brothers. It's just incredible. The Synthesom phone family believed the man who harmed their son was in jail. Gabrish and Balserzak escorted Dahmer and Conorak back to the apartment. Wait, wait, wait. You, 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 you're just going to let him take this baby back inside? Ma'am, he's telling me this is where they live. We're going to take him back inside. Uh, Y'all don't at least want to find out how old this boy is first? Ma'am, he says that's his boyfriend. We'll handle it from here. The young man was killed shortly after. Again, Dahmer had been slippery enough to keep his killings a secret. As soon as the cops left, he murdered the boy. Another would-be victim goes to the police. During Jeffrey Dahmer's insanity trial, clinical psychologist Judith Becker spoke about an escaped victim, referred to by the initials LP due to him being underaged. The victim, a teenage Hispanic male, supposedly met him while he was waiting tables. The two went back to Dahmer's apartment for photos, but not having any sleeping pills to drug the young man, he hit him in the back of his head with a rubber mallet. However, he was still conscious and retaliated, and believing he wouldn't win the struggle, Dahmer let him leave the apartment. The victim reportedly told police about what happened, but once again, they never followed up. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Numerous complaints from neighbors. I gotta say, that smell is worse than ever. Is it? When Jeffrey Dahmer lived in West Allis, his grandma regularly complained about awful smells coming from the basement, and he told her it was from his taxidermy. Jeff, something smells real bad down in the cellar. It's my taxidermy stuff. I told you that already. Years later, at the Oxford Apartments, several residents complained to the building manager, Sopa Princewill, about the foul smells and strange noises coming from apartment 213. We had complaints from residents about the smell that's uh, going through the building. Did you talk to Mr. Dahmer about that? Yes, I did. But Dahmer repeatedly made excuses, like that his freezer broke and meat spoiled, or there were dead fish that were still in the tank. Searching his place would have found human remains all around the apartment, and in some cases, actual dead bodies. Dahmer escapes another close call, but behind closed doors, he's falling apart. Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.